Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Um, I feel very honored to be able to help lead and praise um, this morning. Um, I know that we are all home, and how I wish that we could be together um, at church. However, just know that uh, we are a family, and although we are at, separately at our different homes, we are still together. So I'm gonna invite all of you to please join me by singing, um, I'm Gonna See a Victory. This beautiful song is a song that reminds us that whatever we are going through in our lives, the Lord is there fighting besides us. And um, this song in particular is beautiful because it reminds us that he will be victorious. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause a God is served knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story ends Yes, I know how this story ends I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the Good morning, church family and friends. We want to welcome you to our worship service this morning. We have planned a worship service, and I know it's going to be uplifting, and it's going to be a blessing. Uh, we have the elements of worship that uh, we usually have. We're going to have our music. We're going to have our praising, our songs that are going to uh, uplift us to the Lord. Also, we have planned um, Rico, our chaplain, it has a message today, and he has a message that's going to be an inspiring message. It's going to be a message that's going to give us some comfort and courage. And we want to thank you for being with us this morning uh, via this uh, live streaming. I also want to um, inform the church we have some announcements. We want to keep you up to date. We want to let you know what's taking place, even though we're separated because of the coronavirus, but we can still do ministry through the means that we have today, the technology. And so I want to just make an announcement. We have our website. It's up and running. Uh, it's being kept up to date, so you can get informed through there. You also go to, uh, when you go to our website, you can go to the uh, our church Facebook, and you'll get some information there. Just want to let you know some of the things that are also taking place. We have on uh, Sabbath morning, the uh, youth and early teen, you have a Sabbath school at 10 um, 
at uh, 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, thanks to uh, Chaplain Rico and um, Michelle Pardo. And so you can participate. It's, um, it's for you. And also we have a, um, um, on Wednesday, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that's also on Sabbath at 6 p.m. We have something that's very needed, and that is a prayer meeting time. And that's at 6 p.m. on Sabbath. And um, we want to thank uh, Randy uh, Parker for leading out in this uh, time of prayer. Also want to inform you that um, the uh, grief share is going to resume uh, on Thursdays from 5 to 6.30. And that is going to be um, through uh, via Zoom. So you can participate on that. Uh, Rico is going to get information out on, uh, on that um, ministry. And there's, uh, I just want to go back to the um, prayer meeting. That's going to be a webinar. So if you want to participate, it's at 6 p.m. on webinar. Also want to continue encouraging you and just thanking you for being so generous to the church. You know, our church has been very viable. It's been strong. Thank the Lord. Our... Um, February financial statements were strong, and thanks to you that uh, the church has is, 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 been doing well. Now, the coronavirus is going to cause some challenges, but we want to encourage you to continue being faithful to the Lord. You can continue giving your tithes and offerings to through online giving, uh, lnsda.com. Also, you can uh, mail your um, tithes and offerings, and you'll see that the... Um, address, the church address on the screen. And there's another way that you can uh, uh, br you could bring your uh, offerings to the church. There's going to be a um, drop box. It's secure. It's going to be, uh, mail is going to be picked up every, every day. And so uh, these are some of the means, ways that you can continue being faithful to your church. And once again, we want to thank you for being with us in this worship service and that you would be blessed. That is our prayer. Thank you. Hi, church family. How are you? Happy Sabbath. Um, I hope all is well. I hope you guys are healthy and um, everything is going okay. Um, I'm going to bring your congregational prayer to you today. Um, so if you can, please uh, kneel and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for everything, Lord. We want to thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Lord, we want to thank you for the Sabbath day, this day of rest. Lord, in this time, we need this day more than ever to be able to reconnect with you. Lord, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon our congregation and upon the world, Lord, that you keep them safe, you, keep, you heal them, Lord, uh, you put your protection and guidance over them. Lord, that you uh, give swift healing to any of those that are sick, comfort those that have losses, Lord. And we just ask you to... Um, help us today. Help us get reconnected with you, Lord, if we've fallen away. Help us build that stronger connection, Lord, through this that we're going through. Lord, please build our faith. Help us be people of action, people of your name. Let us spread the gospel in any way we can, Lord. We know that your time is coming soon, and please let us be the voice to the whole world. I ask that you please be with Pastor Rico today as he uh, prepares his sermon and uh, just send your Holy Spirit upon him and his family and all the leaders of our church, Lord. I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church, and I am glad that we can meet via the internet. Our church is still closed, uh, along with many of the other churches in this state. Things are happening so rapidly and so fast. Orders are coming in to stay at home, um, but we still will worship together today um, through our live stream. I want to thank San Bernardino community for helping us uh, produce this and make this happen. Our sister church in San Bernardino, Pastor Gerald Thompson. We thank you and his team. Such an amazing job. Uh, we're all in the family of God and they've helped us made this thing a reality. Thank you so much.
I want to talk with you today about the topic of faith or fear. Faith or fear, because indeed the two cannot exist, live, or walk together. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. Lord, speak to us during this time. Amen. You know, when I think of fear, I think of uh, things that, that, that would make you fearful. Uh, a cat maybe being attacked by a dog. But I came across this picture on the internet, and this cat was not fearful at all. In fact, if you look at it, it looks like she's slapping the dog, saying, who do you think you are? <laughs> she forgot she's the cat, and he's the dog. But what about this picture? You remember this in the 80s, where this one fella, in an act of civil disobedience, stood in front of a tank that could totally annihilate him with just one blast. But yet, he stands there firm, almost fearless. Faith or fear? What is fear? Fear is a noun. It is dread, fright, alarm, panic, terror, trepidation, meaning painful agitation in the presence or anticipation of danger. Fear is the most general term and implies anxiety and usual loss of courage, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely the cause of pain or a threat, a strong, uncontrollable, unpleasant emotion caused by actual or perceived hmm, or threat. He was struck by fear on seeing the snake. A phobia, a sense of fear induced by something or someone. Now fear in and of itself is not bad. Uh, I can think of when I was young, I burned my arm and my mom wanted me to have a better or a healthy fear of fire. And so she explained to me what fire could do and I felt what fire could do. And from that point forward, I had a healthy fear, or we would call it a respect, of fire. I used to be a wrangler, and when I was teaching young people at camp how to ride horses and how to be safe around horses, they loved them. But I had to put in them, instill in them, a healthy fear of an animal that is beautiful but could kill them with one kick. So fear in and of itself is not bad, but we need to have a healthy respect of fear. What is faith? Faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Faith is the connecting power into the spiritual realm, which links us with God and makes him become a tangible reality to the sense of perceptions of a person. Faith is the tangible essence of what is hoped for, so tangible that the faith itself is the evidence, reality, of those things that are not yet visible. Strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. That is faith. Hebrews 1, 11, 1 says, Now faith is the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In short, faith is seeing things the way God sees them. So see thing, seeing things God's way is faith. 1 Kings 17, 1 through 16, talks about a woman that exemplified faith. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to pick it up in verse 11. 1 Kings 17, and I'm going to pick it up in verse 11. As she was going 
to get it. Well, let's, let's go back. Let's, we got to go back to 10. 11 is too far, too far, too far, too far. So he went to Zarephath. Who is he? He is Elijah. He went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called. And bring me, please, a piece of bread, Elijah said. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make meal for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. So she went away and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family, for the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Here we have a picture, a narrative of a woman that was not an Israelite that chose to exercise faith rather than fear. And upon reading this, when I first read it, I said, man, I wonder why God did not send Elijah to one of the starving widows in his hometown, in the, in the village or a place that uh, was, was occupied by Israelites. And, and I got to thinking, was there enough faith in those places? I, I wonder, what, what was it? But for whatever reason, we see that God sends Elijah to this woman. And he's telling her, as she is picking up these stones and these sticks to make a fire, her last meal, this preacher, this man of God, comes up to her and he tells her, uh, look, I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. Can you give me something to drink and something to eat? Unlike many of us would do, she did not tell him her mind. She did not cuss him out. She tells him politely, listen here, man of God, I don't have any food. In fact, I'm gathering these sticks for my last meal, and I have a son. I have no food for him. We're about to die. Look, I know, I, I know, I know you're hungry, but I, I don't have anything for you. And Elijah tells her something that I thought was, I thought was a little cruel. He says, I understand, I understand. But go and give that food to me first. Let me drink first. And then God will take care of your son. As if God couldn't do, let them eat first. And then miraculously fill the jars of water and, and oil and meal after they've eaten. He told her to feed him first. And I thought that was strange. Until God started to open up my mind and point out this thing, fear versus faith. You see, it's one thing to, to uh, be, have your stomach fed and, and your thirst quenched and then do what God asks you to do. But when you find yourself in a famine like this woman did here, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from, and the last little thing you have, God is asking for that? Ah, that takes faith. And that's exactly what Elijah did. And this lady who was not an Israelite complied. Did she comply to Elijah or did she comply to God? The Bible tells us that she knew of Elijah's God, didn't know Elijah, 
but she knew of Elijah's God because she heard of the mighty miraculous things she did. And she put her faith in that God. So when Elijah came to her and said, I'm a representative of this God, so to speak, she believed him. She believed him. And she put her faith in the God of Elijah. In the face of fear, she chose faith. Because of that, we see her faith was honored. Indeed, the Bible tells us there was not a day that she, Elijah, or her son went hungry because she acted in faith. She acted in faith. And God honored her faith. In spite of the credible, in spite of the very present danger of a famine, everyone was starving. She was about to starve to death. She had no more to eat, nothing to drink. But she still chose to put her faith in a God that can do anything but fail. Even though there was no evidence that it was going to happen. Amen. What a wonderful example of faith in the face of fear. Credible fear. Genesis 22, 1 through 14 tells us another story of a great person of faith. And his name is Abraham. Yeah, we, uh, it walks that whole storyline of when he left Ur and how God blessed him. And, and he said, I will bless all nations because of you. And then the big moment happens. The reason why we call him the father of faith. God says, I want you to take your son's life. And the Bible says Abraham reckoned in himself and said that if God could uh, give a son to me in my old age, then he could do anything. But still, doubts were in his mind. And as he was climbing the mountain, he was waiting for God to intervene. And God did not intervene until the last minute. Just as he's about to plunge the knife into his son's chest, God says, stop, stop, Abraham. I see you have put your faith into action. I see you have put your faith in me. And because of that, I will honor your faith. So we see that God honors faith. But what about that uh, great faith story of Noah? My goodness, this a, that's a good one for today. Noah, in his time, it had never rained on the earth. All the scientists said, it's impossible. Rain, what is that? No, that's just a fable. But God said, Noah, it's going to rain. I want you to build me a boat. I need to save these people. And Noah was telling them, telling them the things that God was telling them, but they weren't believing it. And Noah was being ridiculed. He was being attacked. But yet he continued to build the boat because he believed in a God, even though it had never rained. Even though the scientists said, not possible. He built that boat, and because he built that boat, he saved himself and his family, and God honored him. Oh, my God honors faith in the face of fear. He honors faith in the face of contrary evidence. Faith is important. Faith or fear. Right now, we have that question, we have that option as well. How shall we operate in faith or in fear? Hebrews 11, 6 says, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please him. It's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We must go to God knowing that he will reward us for the faith that we put in him. And not this faith that is unseen, but it's a faith that calls us to action, to do. That is the faith that God is talking about. A faith that calls us to do what God tells us to do. Just like we see in the Bible, everyone's faith worked. It wasn't something that was unseen. It wasn't a theoretical faith. It was a faith that was in their hands and in their members. This is the faith that God wants of us. 
And we say, oh, how can this God doesn't understand what faith is all about? Even though he came to this earth, every day of his life he was connected with the Father. He was connected with power. Anything that he wanted to do, he could do because he had that connection. He had that power. He, he doesn't know nothing about faith. It was always there with him. Oh, but when we see him on the cross, when we see him on the cross, dying there, the Bible says he became sin for us. Yes, he was separated from his father. The first time in all of existence that there was a, a, a blur, a, a disconnect in the, in, in the Trinity it was on the cross when he was dying for us. And as he has his arms laid out wide, as he was beaten, he was whipped, the blood was coming down from him, and because of the physical nature of his torture, his mind wasn't operating correct correctly. The Bible says God was laying the sins upon him, so his physical, physical nature was going, and his spiritual nature was being severed, and he had nothing else to rely on, nothing except faith. In God. He couldn't see God's hands. He couldn't feel God's presence. But he knew God's heart. And he put his faith in that. And he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he dies. Oh yes, he knows about faith. In the midst of fear. You think he wasn't fearful on that cross? You think he didn't know what was going to happen. He didn't know what was going to happen. All he saw was death, physical death and spiritual death. He couldn't see anything. He paid the ultimate penalty for our sins. But yet, he acted in faith. And he calls us to do the same. One of my favorite authors says, we have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. We have nothing to fear for the future except we forget the way the Lord has taken care of us. Mercy. We don't need to fear the future. We just remember how God has taken care of us. That's what Abraham did. He remembered how God has taken care of him all those times. God didn't ask him to take your son's life when he first met him. No. He asked him after he had established a relationship with him, a relationship where God always came through. God won't ask us to do anything that our faith relationship in him does not allow us to do. And we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But the problem is that many of us don't have a faith relationship with the Lord. We have a, a menial relationship, a superficial relationship. We don't move in faith. We move in sight. So when, it, when faith requires us to do something, when we're living in the moment, sort of like we're living in now, where, where it's credible fear, we don't know how to operate with faith because we never have done it. We are truly blessed here in the United States. God has blessed us. And us Christians, we don't have to operate on faith because we have bank accounts, we have degrees, we have influence, we have everything that we need. So much so that we, we waste food all the time. Resources here and there doesn't matter to us. We don't need, we don't need faith, but huh, we need some faith now. Yeah. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past. Yes, faith comes from knowing who God is, not from just uh, some fable or this and that, but really knowing who God is. We've got to stay in his word and learn about him. That's faith. <laughs> and if we don't have this spirit of, of faith. We are not operating from faith but fear. We know that doesn't come from God. Because 2 Timothy 1 7 says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love 
and of a sound mind. So if we don't have a spirit of <laughs> faith, then it's not from God. If you're fearful, my friend, it's not from God. I don't want to tell you it's from the, the evil one, but it ain't from God. God has told us what spirit he's given us. He's given us not a spirit of fear, but of power. Power to do what? Power to live right. Of love. Love what? Love for your fellow man. Love for God. Love for your fellow man. And of a sound mind. A sound mind. So when folk are going crazy and are scared out of the mind around you, you have a sound mind. That's what God has given us. Not a spirit of fear. Indeed, that does come from the evil one. Huh. Your friends, we too must have that faith. That faith like Abraham. And that faith like Noah. That faith like the widow of Zarephath. And even if you think that, oh my, you know, I'm not really a, a religious person or I'm not really that strong of a Christian. I'm just a so-so Christian. Oh, I'm a sad Venice, you know. So you can't expect me to operate with the same faith the same way all of those people did. That's not true. Remember, the, wid the widow of Zarephath, she was not an Israelite. But God still expected her to exercise faith. Faith. That same kind of faith. Why? Because Jesus exercised that faith. Why? Because he says, I will be there. All you have to do is take me at my word. And I will do it. But you've got to have faith. You've got to have faith. There's no other way. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. No shortcuts. Fear or faith? Jesus' faith was honored. Indeed, the Bible tells us he is on the right hand of the Father right now. And one day he's going to come back. He died on the cross with criminals. He died on the cross beaten, spat upon, ridiculed. But he's going to come back one day. One day because of his faith. Ah, oh, it sounds crazy, but it was because of his faith. Because of his faith. And he expects us, he expects me, he expects you to exercise that same faith. Why? Because there will be no fearful people in heaven. Revelation 21.8 says, but the fearful and unbelieving, and the uh, abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their place in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is why faith must replace our fear. Is because the fearful, the fearful, the fearful will not Inherit the kingdom of God. Wow, my God. The fearful will not inherit the kingdom of God. Friends, fear is a natural consequence of sin. It only exists when sin is present. When there is no sin present, there is no fear. Why? Because we belong to God. And God owns everything. And even in this world, when we are attacked by murderers, when we are attacked by terrorists, when we are attacked by uh, um, pandemics, epidemics, diseases, when we're attacked by bills, when we're attacked by any and everything, God does not give us a spirit of fear. He says, have faith in me. Oh, have faith in me as I walk you into glory. If you think it's not bad now, it's going to only get worse. Yo. And that's why I, I, this message is so important. Because as it gets worse, the temptation will be to get fearful. As it gets worse, the temptation will be to take our eyes off of God, to have less faith in him, and start looking around us. But God says, don't do that. Continue to have faith in me. 
Continue to look for me for your sustenance. Continue to look for me for your future. We have nothing to fear for the future except we forget. Just continue to look for me and have faith in me. Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, what? It is impossible to please God, guys. It's an amazing thing that when we please God, we're taking care of ourselves. So friends of mine, this coronavirus that is here, the latest and the greatest fear thing that should freak us out and should cause us to be fearful, uh, we, we don't want you to be fearful. Should we have a healthy respect for it? Indeed we should. Why? Because it kills you. And it will kill you. It will continue to kill you. Have a healthy respect for it. Follow the guidelines. Wash your hands. Do the social distancing. But don't be fearful. Have faith. Faith or fear? The question, the choice is yours. God bless you. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live.
Father God, we, <clears throat> we come to you now, Lord, as fragile human beings, Lord, filled with weaknesses, uh, uh, so many weaknesses that we don't even know. We're discovering them every day, Lord. And while we know that we really can't care for ourselves, we have put ourselves into your hand, Lord Jesus. Sometimes it's so easy for us to forget that we belong to you. You have blessed us so much, some, some, sometimes to our undoing. Forgive us for that. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord Jesus. And we ask for a renewed faith in you today. Lord, we ask for not a faith that is just a head faith, but a faith that is in our members that causes us to get up and to go, Lord, to pray for people, to call people, and not be so fearful during this time that we just hunker down in our own home without calling our loved ones, without calling those that don't have family, Lord, without thinking about someone else other than ourselves and doing what we can, even though we are limited and isolated. Uh, we still have telephones. We still have emails. May our faith work during this time. May we be open to whatever you would have us to do so we can build our faith in the midst of this fearful time, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we are praying that you draw a swift and quick end to this coronavirus scare. May those that you have allowed to be in places of leadership, give them wisdom. Show them what they need to do so that they can find a virus, a vaccine for this virus, Lord. So that they can find the best way to stop the spread. Not only here in Orange County, in California, in the United States, but in the world, Lord Jesus. And when you do that, because I'm sure you will, may we, your people... We, your Christian people, we, your Seventh-day Adventist people, fulfill the mission that you have entrusted us with in the beautiful setting that you have allowed us to be. No, we're not persecuted like those in the first century and second century for our faith, like those in Egypt, like those in Afghanistan, the Christians being killed there. Lord, we are in this beautiful setting here, so let us not take that for granted but let us live a life of faithfulness to you. We ask all of these things in Jesus' blessed name. Amen.